Christ in thought, word, and deed, as far as this is humanly possible. That we are to imitate the thoughts of Christ. When you just think about that for a moment, like when St. Paul said, let this mind be in you which was in Christ Jesus. If you think about how pure his mind was, the way he looked towards sinners and towards sin, how he set his mind entirely on others, on doing the will of the Father, on showing mercy and compassion to prostitutes, adulterers, and tax collectors, on the widows and the children, the hungry and the sick. His mind was incredible. What about his words? What if our words became like his words? You know, there's some people that you speak to, and it's as if their words are so edifying, it's as if they're bits of chocolate wrapped in gold. The words are so sweet and precious, you just want them to speak to you more. And the deeds, the washing of the feet, the forgiveness of the adulteress, the eating with the outcast, the carrying a cross, the forgiving of the enemies. What would this world be like if we had a world of Christians, Christians whose standard was the imitation of Christ. And that's where the word Christian comes from, because they were first called followers of the way, the way of Christ, and then they said, those people are Christians. They were first called Christians in Antioch, where St. Paul was serving. I wonder if we taught them this standard. He called them Christians because they acted like Christ whom they worshipped. They could tell the difference of a Christian-like Christian and an unchristlike Christian. Can you imagine what this world would be like if there were more Christs around, more icons of Christ? You are an icon Icon meaning image of Christ. Now to convince you a little bit more of this, I want to put it in this way. There is this amazing book in the Orthodox Church. It's like the Bible of Orthodox spirituality called the Philokalia. Some people say the Philokalia, some people call it the Philokalia. Which one is Philokalia? Since none of you are Greek, it doesn't matter. This is an incredible book. The Great Father's writings are in it from all the way from St. Anthony to, you know, later centuries, it's incredible. And as much as the writings of this book are incredible, you want to know what really moves me? I haven't read much of the book yet. What moves me is the name. The name of the book. What does philokalia mean? What does philo mean? Philo means love. Kalia means beauty or the beautiful one. Philokalia is love of beauty or love of the beautiful one. That is the name of the book, which is the Bible of Orthodox spirituality. It's all about loving the beautiful one. All that is beautiful in the world is in Christ. All the beauty comes from Christ and all the beauty points to Christ. By the looks of it, the way you are looking today, Every one of you has a desire to be beautiful. Otherwise, you wouldn't have come the way you are. You have a desire to become beautiful. There is no greater beauty than the soul that has aspired to take on the beauty of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is our new calling. This is the highest standard. It's to become even more beautiful. So if you hadn't heard it before, today you have. We're being called to the highest standard. Now we're not just called, but we're predestined. We're created to grow into the image. We have the spiritual DNA. So, how is this going to happen? For those of you that have the sheets, if you wanted to fill this out. It requires, number one, struggle. This is not, by any stretch of the imagination, easy. 
I mean, this is a huge struggle. Imagine right now, if we're to imitate Christ, look at how close you are to Christ right now. How close are you to His image? In His mind and His deeds? I would think that most of us would find that we are way off. There's so much that would have to be corrected in us. So much that is so unchristlike, that has been ingrained in our everyday. It's almost a part of who we are, our passions, our desires, our habits. You will never become like Christ without this effort, which we call ascesis or asceticism. We're going to talk about that more. But also, because there's so much within us that is unchristlike, it's going to require an undoing and a cleansing, much cleansing. That's why the goal of Lent is also repentance. It's helping us to become like Christ. Number two, nothing will be accomplished without the grace of God. Everything in the Orthodox Church, we rely on the work of the Holy Spirit given to us. We rely on Him for everything. The Bible teaches us that we cannot even say the name of the Lord Christ in faith without the Holy Spirit working in us. We'll never become like Him. You know, when St. Paul in 2 Corinthians, when he's talking about the mind of Christ in Philippians, he says this other area, he says, Who knows the things of a man but the spirit of a man? And who knows the things of God but the spirit of God? Like how will anyone ever know what God is like unless we know His spirit? And he goes through this and at the very end of that chapter, the last verse, when he's saying nothing knows what God is like except the Spirit, then He says, we have the mind of Christ. St. Paul said it. He says, we've got it. How? Well, the Holy Spirit who knows God's mind can implant it in you. We rely on the Holy Spirit for everything. And that is so reassuring. Because if I said, I want you to go and imitate Christ on your own, you would say, no way. But God gave us what He calls the Helper, the Holy Spirit. That's actually His name, the Helper, whom He sent. Number three, I want you to realize that this process will never be completed on earth. Now, I know we set goals for Lent. And if you were to say, okay, 55 days, I'll be like Christ. That would be awesome. That would be the work of the Spirit in an amazing way. But ultimately, this will probably take eternity. There's this great verse. St. John, in his first epistle, he says, We're children of God, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. But we know that when He is revealed, we shall be like Him. For we shall see Him as He is. He's talking about in heaven. We will be like Him. We'll be made more perfect when we see Him as He is. But I'll tell you what, I'm a sinner. I will continue to be so for the rest of my life. I hope to be less good at it by the end of my life. And yet, I am always a sinner. My goal is to be less sinful. I have to set my mind on this path. I'm not going to just read my Bible and say some prayers. I will not stop until I have become like Christ, in which will take you your whole life. And then the last thing. There's this great verse. I love this verse. Now thanks be to God, who always leads us in triumph in Christ, and through us diffuses the fragrance of His knowledge in every place, for we are to God the fragrance of Christ among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. We are the fragrance of Christ? That is strange. Maybe. I was just reading a quote on the internet the other day. It says, you are going to be like the top five people you spend your time with. The people you spend the most time with is the person you're going to become the most like. 
if you spend more time with Christ, it's more likely that you will be His fragrance. Number four, and this is where I want you to begin. I need more time with Christ. How can I ever be like Him if I never spend time with Him? If I never read about Him? If I never talk to Him? If I never stand in His presence in this church? So, number four. I will spend more time with Him. And if you think about it, this is the best season. This is the season where I think most of us were drawn to Christianity. This is the season where we see the beauty of Christ the most. Where you see, He loved us to the very end. He endured the cross while we were yet sinners. I mean, He did everything He could and everything I find beautiful in Him, much of it I find in this season. So why not spend this time? You know, you always want to say, oh, you want to spend time with the good looking people? This is not a trophy wife. This is a trophy God. Walk around with Him. Now this journey through Lent and through the rest of your life and through eternity, I want to let you know it's already been begun by Christ. He's already started the journey. So like when we go through this fast, it's not our fast. We're hoping to participate in His fast which was perfect. We're hoping to participate in His crucifixion which we did when we were baptized and be raised with Him which we received when we were raised. We were Put on Christ. So the journey has already begun by Christ. And you have begun it when you were baptized. Because it says as many as you have been baptized have put on Christ. So it's begun already. He will accompany us on the journey. He will strengthen us for the journey. And then I want you to realize. He is the final destination of this journey. We are moving from image to image. From glory to glory day by day, towards Him. This is our goal, forever. May God be glorified in our lives, always. Let's stand and pray. In the name of the